Now, many of you have been asking me how it is that we do our dewarming. We're about to break it down for you along with our cock city of prevention. We're going to do this in three, two, one. Let's make it happen. Now, fam, I must tell you, I am not a vet. I'm just sharing with you what it is that we do in our yard. Okay. Come on. Mosquito basically carries the larvae, bites your dog. Six months later, those worms are going to be reproducing. Mosquito shows up again and bites this infected dog. And now the larvae is inside of the mosquito. But then it turns around and bites an uninfected dog and makes him infected. And the cycle goes all over again. It's really important to dewarm your dogs and also dewarm them on schedule. Um, I can tell you guys one of the things I use for dewarming, in particular for heartworm, is ivermectin now if you go to your vet they're gonna prescribe or, or give you something called heart guard and that's that's pretty much ivermectin uh, we just do it a little bit differently um, but heart guard is definitely you know it's definitely good for uh, heart worms. but just so you're aware it's more of a preventative than anything else but what do I mean by that what I mean by that is um, it doesn't allow the larvae to pretty much mature inside of the dog and it ends up dying. And that's the end of that. Whereas, once they get heartworms, you can give them all the ivermectin you want. It doesn't necessarily mean it's going to get rid of the actual heartworm that's already inside of the dog's heart. So, definitely prevention. You must do it, especially if you live in the southeastern of the U.S. Texas, Florida. All these southeastern states, even Hawaii, were primed for heartworm. So the best way to handle it is make sure you give your dogs a monthly dose of ivermectin. We actually buy ivermectin for horses, which they sell at the feed store on a per pound basis. It comes on a syringe and you actually dose them uh, based on their weight. And uh, that's just our choice. You don't have to do it our way. By all means, you can definitely just buy heart guard. But we found it to be a lot more cost efficient when we do it. At times, it could last us for about six months. So, um, definitely worth it to us. Now, let me talk to you guys real quick about Coccidia and what we do to fix it. Uh, pretty much, Coccidia is a nasty little parasite that once it's reached your kennel, it gets on the ground because it's got to do with feces. And it goes hand in hand with this other nasty little bug called Giardia. They actually look very similar actually. Except Giardia, you usually get it from either puddles or rainwater that's come in contact with feces. And Coccidia, pretty much your dog has come in contact with feces and it's food somehow. Now, it's got nothing to do with how well you keep clean your kennel area. Uh, it could actually be transmitted by a fly. All you need is a fly to literally land on some poop, get coccidia on its, on its legs, and pretty much land on your dog's food, and, and guess what? Now you have a dog that's got coccidia. Typically, you may not see much as far as weight of... Um, signs and symptoms on an adult but on an immature pup you're going to notice immediately they're going to get depressed they're not going to want to eat don't want to play they're actually going to just want to be alone far away from the rest of the pups usually this is a tall tell sign that something is going on with your pup and it's a good time to get them checked out for coccidia now we use a different type of method as far as, you know, what type of medications and or treatment for coccidia. So what do we do? We give them sulfamethasoxazole and trimethoprim. This essentially is going to set them up where we're going to give them 20 milligrams per pound for the first dose. And then we're going to reduce that to 10 milligrams per pound for the next five days. Next thing we use is metronidazole, which is another antibiotic. We actually give them 12 milligrams per pound twice a day 
for 10 days. Metronidazole is an antibiotic that is used for a host of things, including coccidia and also Giardia. But when you couple these two together, you're actually hitting coccidosis, you know, from two different angles. It actually works out very well. Back in the day when I was actually starting out as a breeder, I actually started doing some research because I started getting puppies getting sick and they were actually lining up with signs and symptoms of coccidiosis. I actually found this information and I used it within 24 hours. They were eating, wagging their tails and they were playing. We went through the treatment for five days. We took them to get tested and they were actually cleared. This particular treatment, I don't use it on pups that are younger than five weeks unless I totally have to. In fact, I usually like to wait till six weeks until I actually do it. I normally do it at six and I'll turn around and do it again when they're nine weeks old. This is how we treat Coccidia and Giardia. We treat them both the same. We don't waste time trying to figure out if it's one or the other, if they're misdiagnosed, when they're put under the microscope or none of that. Once they tell you you have it, don't waste time. A lot of these medications, unfortunately, uh, you gotta buy them from fish antibiotic websites online uh, because they won't sell them at PetSmart or your typical pet store. I gotta get these dogs in. And I'm gonna explain to you in there what, how it is that we treat all of our internal, intestinal, and external parasites. Let's go. Come on. Come on. Yeah, let's go. Come on. Let's go. Next up is intestinal parasites. We're talking about hookworm, roundworm, and whipworm. For that, we use something commercially called Safeguard, which is fembendazole. And we feed it to our pups five days in a row. We then count 21 days and we repeat for five more days. This extra step is gonna kill any eggs that have hatched from the previous deworm. Next up on the list is tapeworm. Now, tapeworms do not respond to fembendazole. They actually respond to a medication called praziquantel. You could also find it as Bayer Tapeworm Dewormer. I've actually left the link below. You could order it online and just give it to your dogs. Follow the instructions on the box. They're non-warm parasites that you actually must kill with penicillin or doxycycline. Also, you're gonna need IV fluids for your dogs. I recommend you get with your vet in order to be able to treat them for something like this. As we concentrate on external parasites, you look at fleas and ticks, but look for a minute at lice and mites. Remember the ivermectin we were talking about for the heartworms? It also works for this. So let's take those two off the list and concentrate on fleas and ticks. Now for fleas and ticks, you all know I have done chlorhexidine baths. I've done vinegar baths. I've talked to you guys about it. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I'm going to go ahead and drop a link at the end of this video and you're going to be able to check out that video. It's going to show you exactly what it is that we do whenever we do our baths on our dogs in order to get ticks and fleas and any other external parasite that wants to jump on there. But say for whatever reason you couldn't do the baths because you live in an apartment or because, I don't know, you don't have that much water, then you can always order Brevecto straight from your vet. It's the only way you're going to be able to get it. And it's actually weight-based and it goes month to month. So make sure you ask your vet about it. One of the most natural flea repellents that we use is brewer's yeast. We actually add one teaspoon to our dog's meal. You can add a quarter cup to one of those one quart spray bottles and you can use it on your dog and spray it on them. We find that the combination of these two things actually helps to repel fleas. Now keep in mind, it's not gonna go in there and totally kill an active flea infestation. It's only as a repellent. The other flea repellent we have used is rose geranium oil. Wherever they sell natural oil or any natural living store, all you do is you apply about five drops of geranium oil on the dog's collar and you spread it all over the collar. Every two or three days, you're gonna notice that the scent is gonna to start to fade. All that means is go ahead and reapply. Again, this is used to repel fleas and not necessarily to get rid of an active infestation. Chamomile tea. Yes, you heard me right, chamomile tea. You're also probably thinking how you're gonna get your dog to actually drink it. When in fact, that isn't what we're actually making the tea for. You go ahead and put two chamomile bags in about 20 ounces of water and you go ahead and boil it. Once it finishes boiling, go ahead and turn off the stove and remove the two bags and let it cool. You go ahead and pour it on a spray bottle and you can spray it on your dog wherever they have itchy skin. This is very useful, especially during the summertime. Next one on the list is vitamin E oil. And as you well know, vitamin E is very 
good for the skin. So if your dog have any sores or they have patchy dry skin, you could actually apply it to there. If it has a sore, it's gonna help it heal faster. If it has dry patchy skin, it's actually gonna help moisturize it. Vitamin E is an antioxidant and is actually gonna go ahead and defend against free radicals in your dog's skin. It's also good for your dog's immune system, heart, liver, overall skin, and coat. Now keep in mind, most pharmacies carry it or natural living stores. Next one on the list is coconut oil and I'd strongly recommend this for all pet parents. Coconut oil actually helps for any type of allergies that your dog may have on its skin, like eczema or even flea allergy, itchy skin, or even contact dermatitis. It will also help with condition of skin and coat. Now you can find coconut oil just about anywhere, whether it's a grocery store or large chain pharmacies or natural stores. Coconut oil is pretty much abundant everywhere. And as one last added benefit, I have found that it stops runny stools in my yard. We actually give one teaspoon every two or three days to our dogs. This one next on the list is also going to help with your dog's stool, but in a little bit of a different way. I'm talking about none other than plain yogurt with no sweeteners and no sugar. Keep in mind xylitol is actually a toxic ingredient that a lot of times they put in to sweeten things and it could be very detrimental to your dogs. Plain yogurt has a lot of probiotics in there which actually help absorb more nutrients and keep a better balance between the good flora and the bad flora inside of the gut, which in turn is actually gonna help with healthier stools. Next on the list is cranberry and cranberry supplements. And much like humans, it also relieves urinary tract infections in dogs. You can find over-the-counter cranberry supplements in most pharmacies and grocery stores. But you must check with your veterinarian to make sure that you're giving the appropriate dosage to your dog. Last and certainly not least, we're gonna be talking about pumpkin. Now, pumpkin has become a staple over here in my yard because it brings vitamins, antioxidants, and even minerals to our dog. It's also low in calories. It helps with constipation, and it also helps with diarrhea. It actually creates more solid stool, filling the intestinal wall and pushing everything out in front of it. It lowers pH in blood, eliminating bacterial growth, and provides nutrients for the good bacteria. But don't wait for the next Halloween to buy a pumpkin. Make it a staple in your yard. If you want to see how it is that we manage our dog pack, or if you want to see what it is that we feed them, make sure you click on either video. We'll see you there.